day viewers it's another time of bible study and we continue to be grateful to god for the privilege we have in these seasons to always be exposed to his word the perfect law of liberty which is able to bring understanding to the simple hearts today we continue our discussion on the general theme for the year covenant with the living god under the sub team family and covenant with the living god remember last week specifically we looked at the concept of family and god exposed it to the diverse families that we have within the fold the body of christ and today we'll be looking specifically as god's foundation for a family we are blessed and privileged to have our fathers in god who are here to help us look at look at this very important topic the foundation for a family. By my right is the Reverend Canon Smart Simon. I must say a regular face on this platform. He is the vicar, St. Matthias Anglican Church, who we'll say here in Abuja Diocese. You're welcome to the program, Canon. Thank you for having me. And then by my left is the Reverend Canon Bola Ogunyawo. He's a priest, St. James Anglican Church at Sokoro, also here in Abuja Diocese. You're welcome to the program, Doctor. Thank you. Thank you for having me once again here. I encourage you to invite everybody. God has something to say to someone today. And I pray this session will bless all of us together in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Our aim <clears throat> will be to teach the foundation of any human social system. Is to teach that the foundation of any human social system is laid by the Almighty God. And secondly, to further expose the principles of God for human social system our god is a god of order we look into the scriptures briefly to see the principles for our human social existence quickly i'll invite our fathers in god to help us take the background text genesis chapter 1 verse 27 to 30 canon smart sir and then canon doctor genesis chapter 9 1 to 7 Genesis 1, 27 to 30. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female. He created them. Mm. Then God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. And God said, See, I have given you every herb that yields seed which is on the face of all the earth, and every tree whose fruit yields seed to you, it shall be for food. Also to every beast of the earth, to every birth of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, in which there is life. I have given every green herb for food, and it was so. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Yeah, very quickly, Genesis chapter 9 from verse 1, and it reads, so God blessed Noah and his sons and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth. And the fear of you and the dread of you shall be on every breast of the earth, on every bird in the air, on all that moves on the earth, and all, all the fish of the sea. They are given into your hand. Every moving thing that lives shall be food for you. I have given you all things, even as the green herbs. But you shall not eat flesh with its life, that is, its blood. Surely for your life blood I will demand a reckoning. From the hand of every breeze I will require it. And from the hand of man, from the hand of every man's brother, I will require the life of the man. Whoever sheds man's blood, by man his blood shall be shed. For in the image of God he made them. And as for you, be fruitful and multiply. Bring forth abundantly in the earth and multiply in it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Our introduction quickly. As we remember the day when the Holy Spirit descended on the early apostles, 
I must say it's an exciting season in our church, the birth of the New Testament church, the day of Pentecost. Let us also always ask for the guidance of the Holy Spirit in the life of our family. When God created, them, created Adam and Eve, he did so for it to serve as the basis for human society. The foundation was based on a vital social principle that we can see clearly in chapter, verse 6 of chapter 9 of Genesis. Whoever sheds man's blood, by man his blood shall be shed. For in the image of God he made man. However, mankind has from generation to generation abused both the foundation and the principle governing human coexistence. How has this abuse affected our human social order? I mean, there's no gain saying this. When you go out of God's laid down order for human social existence, we've seen the distortion manifesting in various facets of our national life. We are trusting God to help us as we begin to look at the study guide more closely. Canon Smart, sir. Yes, sir. With reference to our text, how can you explain God's foundation for human social existence? And I would like you to quickly read verse 28 of Genesis chapter 1 and then I'll read verse 7 of Genesis chapter 9 and then we'll share in your thoughts, sir. Okay. Genesis 1, 28 says, Then God blessed them and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply. Mm. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Thank you very much, The word sir. of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Verse 7 of chapter 9, Genesis. And as for you, be fruitful and multiply. Bring forth abundantly in the earth and multiply in it. How do you begin to explain God's foundation for our human social existence, sir? All right. First of all, I want to thank God for this very special Sunday. Thank you, sir. Uh, being Pentecost Sunday, the day the Holy Spirit came upon the apostles yes, sir. at the upper room. Mm. And on a day like this, the church was given birth to. Yes, sir. Uh, so without the Holy Spirit coming upon the church, mm. there won't be church. And that is that about the Pentecost Sunday. Yes, so sir. special. It's yeah. always a Sunday. I look forward to. Yes, sir. However, talking about the Bible study, how can I explain God's foundation for human social existence? And looking at the text that is before us, I would have loved to start looking at it from verse 27. Yes, sir. Um, verse 27 has said something that is very, very critical. We, we must start from verse 27. Yes, sir. And verse 27 says, So God created man in his own image. image. In the image of God, he created him, male and, and female. female. He created them. Yes, sir. Okay, so first of all, when God has finished his work of creation, mm. he then created human being. Yes, sir. And when he created human being, he put us in a privileged position. Yes, sir. That we should look like him. Mm. So he created us in his own image. image. And when he finished creating us, there the foundation of the family started. Mm. And then what did he do? When he created us, the Bible says that, and he blessed, blessed them. them. Awesome. So every human being on the face of the earth is blessed by God. Yes, sir. I am, I am so excited mm. to again remind myself, I'm every one of us, that look, you are the blessed by God. God. Awesome. And after that, then God blessed them again and he said to them, be fruitful. Now, we're going to look at these mandates, yes, sir. these principles yes, sir. that God has laid. And first of all, he, the Bible says, he said, be fruitful. Mm. Every human being is meant to be fruitful. And after fruitfulness, he, he said, multiply. multiply. And after multiplication, he said, fill the earth, subdue it, and then have dominion. Mm. 
So these are the things that God actually place upon us awesome. and bless us with to subdue, to enjoy, to replenish the earth. Hmm. So every family that God has uh, established, every family that God has established, these are the things, these are the principles, these are the foundation that God actually place upon a family. Awesome. Come on, sir. I Let's share your to, thoughts. I just want to break it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I just want to break it down. It's, the answer Colonel Smart gave is awesome. Awesome. But I'm looking at the context of social there. Yes, you sir. You say okay. social existence. Mm. You know, the multiplication they talked about is in two, I, can, I want to say it, say it in twofold. Mm. Family fold. Yes, sir. You know, when you're married, mm. you give birth to children. Yes, sir. That's multiplication. Yes, sir. Two, he has blessed the earth for our sake. So whatever you do, you get fruit from it, then you mm. multiply. So I want to see it on that awesome. angle. Mm. I don't know, to just to buttress the point yeah. that he brought in. Because he's talking about social now. Mm. You know, family is private. Mm. You and your wife alone in your room. But social now, you go out of your place. And in the process of working, you interact with people. You understand? You interact with people, you talk with people, your business, your contract, your gesture, your life. That is the social part of it. So. You just have to multiply. So the blessedness that God is talking about is not limited to perhaps your immediate family. No. It also extends even to your everyday interaction everyday with interaction people. people that's the work you. of your hand. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And I'm excited when, Kanosma, when you spoke and said, it's interesting to remind ourselves again that we are blessed of God. Mm. Because it's possible someone out there is thinking, Maybe because of what he or she is going through now that I'm not blessed. Mm. God is reminding you that you are a blessed child of God. Mm. Just receive it mm. and you see what God will do in your life mm. now and in the days ahead in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Karambola, to you now, what is God's foundational principle for human Coexistence, coexistence, mm. and I think that has to do with interactions now. Coexistence, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and we are reading Genesis chapter nine verse six. You help us read that quickly, yes. And then you compare it with Exodus, Exodus chapter 21, twenty-one, yes. twelve to fourteen. Yeah, Can us smart? Revelations chapter thirteen, ten. Yes, very quickly. Genesis nine six says, "Whoever sheds man's blood, by man his blood shall be shed, for in the image of God he made man." man. Then Exodus chapter 21, verses 12 to 14. He who strikes a man so that he dies shall surely be put to death. Mm. However, if he did not lie in wait, but God delivered him into his hand, then I will appoint for you a place where he may flee. Mm. But if a man acts with premeditation against his neighbor to kill him by treasury, you shall take him from my altar that he may he die. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's take the revelations before mm -hmm. we now go. Revelation 13 10. verse 10. He who leads into captivity shall go into captivity. Mm. He who kills with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. <laughs> wow. <Can I>, <laughs> this is deep. I mean, but let me take it one after the other. You know, we're talking about what is God's foundation for principle of human coexistence? Coexistence. Now, just like we discussed under question one, you know, our daily day-to-day -day interaction mm. and our family. That's to tell you, for you to multiply on family ground, you can't do man to man. Mm. Yes, sir. Because doing man to man or woman to woman is a dead end. Mm. You know, they're selling the idea now in the world and it's going so fast. Yes, sir. But if we buy into this idea they are selling to us, like, okay, all of you turn married man to man, hmm. all of you married man to woman, in the next 40, 50 years, the humanity will go extinct. We'll go into extinction. Yeah. It's as simple as that. So, man to man, woman to woman, woman to, man to animal, woman to animal does not apply. It's an aberration. And it's an aberration. God bless you, sir. And I'm, I, I'm, I'm thanking God for the succession of the leaders, primates that the Lord has blessed our communion with, who have stood stoically against 
This we just have to start, start that this fight very agenda. strongly. And that's the real essence of GAFCON. Yes, sir. Where the Anglicans, the faithfuls of the world, come together, separating themselves under Lambeth. Mm. I say, no, we're not going with this, your idea. It's against our scriptural belief. Awesome. That is it. So, man to man, woman to woman, man and animal, it's woman and animal, it's not scriptural. Not just scriptural, it's a sin against humanity. Yes, sir. In the first place. That's the derogatory of human nature. Nature. Ab ab all that kind, that kind of Completely. attitude. You will never see a dog going to meet a cat. You will never see a chicken going to meet a fish. It's not possible. If fish can't think that way, how ah, can we? Human In beast. Genesis, where can us want read? Genesis chapter 1. Male and female, he created, created them. them. There is a purpose for it. You can't, well, transgender, you know, transgender are coming up now. Mm. Then my question now is this. If man to man are married one of you now decided to go and turn to woman but initially you felt you don't need a woman so why now turn yourself to need the the, the gesture the inner features of a, of a woman mm. why don't you say yes as a man i can give back why do transgendering you understand what i'm yes, saying sir. that does not happen that's a one part of it hmm. the second part of it now is a man killing a man i love the way exodus put it because even the chapter, chapter verse 12 said, He who strikes a man, he shall surely be put to death. And now verse 13, and now put a clause. He said, However, if he did not lie in wait, he said, God, but God delivered him into his own hand. Mm. Which means God will do his own judgment. If, yeah. If I thought there's nobody that's going to do judgment for whatever, God will do his own judgment. But if I thought he escapes that, verse 14 now says, But if a man acts with premeditation, Meditation. You can see, against his neighbor to kill him by treachery. And you shall take him from my altar that he may die. In other words, let's look at our country. How can we name it? Insecurity up and down. Yes, killing sir. everywhere. To the extent that it's even out of control right now. Should we say, God should come down and kill all of these people? Or should we by ourselves carry gun to do judgment? If we decide to carry gun and kill them, we're justified according to the word of the scripture. Hmm. Hmm. According to the word of the scripture in Genesis, Exodus chapter 21, we say, no, our political leaders have failed us in this country. They have killed, they have maimed, they have put us in trouble. Let's carry our gun and kill them. We, according to the word of scripture in Exodus 21, we are just for kind of amount. I don't know. Somebody will begin to situate it in the line of <laughs> the New Testament teaching. We are just saying if someone slaps you, uh, you know, we need to have that balance. Now, it not came to me. I've seen some reverend brothers, clergy in the Anglican church in the northern part of the country, during their services, are they carried gun. Will I blame them? Not at all. They need to defend themselves. They need to defend themselves. You, you, know, you know, I'm looking at, in the bigger context of what we are going through in our country, I'm asking that God will help the leadership of our country to respond. Because if it gets so bad, people will be pushed to the world to the extent of, I mean... Are you sure we are not being pushed to the world already? <laughs> Maybe because we are in a state or city where security tends to be beefed up a little. But if you go to the south south to the southeast, you will see what people are exposed to on a daily basis. Hmm. Children are being raped. Underage minors are being raped. And the government are releasing these people. The bandits, the Boko Haram, they are killing people on a day to day. The government is not doing anything. Somebody said something to me recently. In the south southeast, if the IPOP did anything, government will send soldiers to go and kill them. In the southwest, the OPC do anything, government will send soldiers to go and kill them. But meanwhile, all around the world, they all around Nigeria, they Boko Haram are killing, and government is not sending anything to them. Instead, they are throwing ambulances at their feet. They arrest them, they say yes, they have repented and release them back into the society. Now, Boko Haram is dying down, it's not bandit. Unknown government. That is the latest word in town now. Unknown government here and there. Mm. Unknown government. <clears throat> Greenfield University. People are kidnapped. They're not doing anything about it. I mean, now, should we go by the word of the scripture? Should we say everybody should defend themselves in the word of America? In America, everybody carries gun. Should we not say in Nigeria? Christians in Nigeria should join everybody to carry the gun. But we won't do that. Yes, we'll go back to the life that the Lord Jesus Christ has given us. Mm. God had put the clause there in verse 13 of that Exodus 21. He said, if he lies in wait, God himself will catch him. Uh, we are, as the word of, the, of Christ has come to us, we are talking about coexistence here. We have to exist with them. We have to find a balance. Live with them with forgiveness. It's difficult. But if Christ has redeemed us, actually, 
as we're talking about today, the day of Pentecost, where the Holy Spirit came down. Do you want to think, are you telling me that what the Jews, the Roman emperor, the government, the Jewish soldier did to the disciples, if they want to revenge, you, will you think it's enough? No. But we have to buy into the activity of today, the day of Pentecost, the day that the Holy Spirit came, came down, down and neutralized every wickedness, neutralized every unforgiveness, and forgive. And the word preached, and people came back to the Lord Jesus Christ. Awesome. Am I excited you talked about in ending the power of the Holy Spirit to arrest the hearts of men mm. so that we indeed can live the life of Christ in terms of forgiveness? I know it's difficult. But it's doable. Mm. Your take before we go on break, sir. Yes. Um, just this past month, the month of April, there has been kidnapping and killing and maiming in this country. We are aware that uh, College of Forestry students that were kidnapped were in captivity. And uh, Greenfield University students were kidnapped. Some of them killed. In fact, as I said, on the... On the 4th of May, they gave ultimatum that government must pay 100 million, otherwise they will no kill. kill all of them. Yes. So this is the situation that is happening in our country. But it's good that the, 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 the word of God is reminding us something very, very important from Revelation chapter 3, verse 3, that he who leads into captivity, he himself will go into to captivity. captivity. Mm. So those who are kidnapping people and keeping them in captivity, they should know that they themselves will also go into captivity. If they are not already in captivity, because they are already captives of sin. And then he says, he who kill with sword will also die by the sword. So anybody that is involved in killing, that person will also as well be killed. It's just a matter of time. Mm. But above all, the word of God is reminding us that human life is sacred. Sacred. Don't hurt. And we must take that seriously and remind ourselves that no human being is allowed to kill another. Unless in the event where it's an accident and Exodus actually tells us what will happen. But apart from that, no human being whatsoever is allowed to kill another human being. I think this is a good reminder to every one of us. And to a larger globe world, there is racism now reigning in the world right now. Tribes abusing the other tribes for whatever superiority reason. We should be careful as children of God. We have been called out. Yes, it could be painful, just like he said. It's, and definitely it's painful. But we should not forget, human life is sacred. Awesome. And we have been called out. And we have to just shed that light to people that are out there. For me, looking at the plethora of issues going on around us in our world and in our country, the question is, why so much hate? Why so little love? We'll be back in a moment to continue. God bless you. Now streaming, now analyzing, now assessing, now discussing, now sharing your thoughts on everything and every issue that affects you. ACNN is now streaming, discusses the issues trending and the matters that matter to us all. Join us every Monday to Friday at 10 a.m. on ACNN as we go in-depth into every issue that impacts our lives, our communities and our country. Welcome back. Remember, we've been looking at God's foundation for a family. And I've been in the studio with our fathers in God, the Reverend Canon Dr. Bola Oguyamo and Reverend Canon Smart Simon. Welcome to the program once again. Thank you so much for having us. Canon Bola, I'd like us to quickly, before we get into study guide question three, to mm. look at the B part of that question too, briefly, in just mm. a few seconds. You know, we've listed out the issues mm. God's principle is that you don't hurt your neighbor, mm. you don't hurt another. But we are seeing that that principle is not being kept in our time and in our country. The carnage is just so much. It's like blood is flowing everywhere in our land. Is mankind following the principles of this foundation, both in obedience and in fear of God's judgment? No. Just <laughs> straight up. No. If we are, we won't be in so much blood as we are now. Mm. There's so much blood in the land. The little ones, children, three years, a few days ago, a, teen, a, a, a youth, 27 year old, went into a compound, gave the other children money for biscuits, go and buy biscuits, go and buy biscuits. 
and pick up a three-year-old daughter and did unimaginable with her, but I was caught. Are we going to talk about robbery? Banks being robbed, people being shot in the bank, on the highway. Even the so-called security officers are shooting people and all in the name of accidental discharge. Straight bullets. Hmm. So and the government is quiet. And it boils down to man's disobedience. A man not living in fear, in of, fear God's of God's God. judgment. That is one side. That is physical. How about people that use the so-called some Christian brethren that use mouths to kill their brethren? All they are looking for one favor or cheap favor somewhere. They say, ah, I know sister, I know sister, sister Bola. Oh, oh, ah, no, don't give her. She will do this, she will do that. You spoil your sister, your Christian sister. Just because sister, you're looking for Just because you're looking for favor. That is murder. So when God is talking about killing now. It's not just the gun and, and I, the knife. And I think Jesus expansiated on this further in the New Testament. Exactly. When he said, it's not just about you physically, that when you even meditate and think of in, it, of it in your heart, you have committed, you have committed it. it. Yeah, yes, Canon, let's okay. look at question three. Yes, sir. What is the rating of mankind by God in Genesis chapter 1, verse 28? We will not be reading that. We, we've read it earlier. That's talking about the dominion mandate that God gave us. But let's look at Psalm chapter 8, verse 16. Canon Bola, you help us read Hebrews chapter 2, verse 8. Quickly, okay. and I'll take First Corinthians fifteen twenty-seven, and then okay. we share your thoughts. Psalm eight verse six: You have made him to have dominion mm -hmm. over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet. Under his feet. And then First Corinthians fifteen twenty-seven: For he has put all things under his feet. Mm. But when he says all things are put under him, it is evident that he who put all things under him is accepted. Hebrews 2 verse 8. You have put all things in subjection under his feet. For in that he put all in subjection under him. And left nothing that is not put under him. But now we do not yet see all things put under him. What is the rating of mankind by God in, in, in these scriptures? Tie it to Genesis 1.28. You know I'm excited at the privileged position. I am very, very <laughs> excited because the rating of mankind, I don't know, language is going to fail me to actually describe what God is saying here. But look at Psalm, 6 verse, uh, Psalm 8 verse 6. Yes, sir. He said, you have put all things, you have put all things under his feet. Hmm. And then in 1 Corinthians, he said, he has put all things under his feet. Again, in Hebrew chapter 2, verse 8, you have put all things in subjection under his feet. And who is the Bible talking about? The Bible is talking about mankind. Yes, sir. God has actually placed mankind in a very high pedestal. Mm. And it cannot be compared with any other thing. Yes, sir. And the Bible says that in all things, yes. without exception, that it has been placed under our feet. feet. Permit me to say that human beings are little gods mm. here on earth. earth. That is the position. Jesus said, you yourself are God. Yeah. So if God has placed everything under our feet, it means that God has given us authority over all things, things. here on earth. And that is why Genesis 28 has said that we, we, should, we should replenish the earth, we should subdue it and have dominion. This is what God has given us. Mm. It's a privilege, my brother, that God has placed us in this position. Unfortunately, many of us, we, we are not aware uh. of this authority, <laughs> of this power that God has placed under our feet. Let me drive that point home. In, Gen in Genesis chapter 9, Yes, sir. we read it, but I want to play emphasis now on verse 2 and verse 3. It says, And the fear of you, Mm. And the fear of you shall be, oh. and the fear of you and the dread of you shall be on every beast of the earth, mm. and on every bird of the air, and all that move on the earth, and all the fish of the sea, they are given into your hand. Verse 3. Every moving thing that lives shall be food for you. I have given you all, all things, things, even as the green herbs. You shall not, you sh but you shall not eat the flesh, flesh with its life. life. So, which means you can see. No wonder, Ephesians, 
He said, every, every power, he said, all principalities and powers. He now gave description, Ephesians chapter 6. Mm. He said, every principality, we do not raise against flesh and blood, but it's against like principalities and power. And powers. He continues against power in mm. where? Against spiritual darkness in the high places. In high places. You can see, the ones in the air, they are under us for our food. Mm. The ones on the ground, they are under us for food. Even the Alps, they are under us. Mm. What are we looking for? It's like, oh, like, I'm trying to find a way. See, you can't at, the imagine death, at the death of Jesus on the cross, there was alteration in heaven. Man was low, on the low ham of affairs. You know? Jesus. Please. At the low ham of affairs in the heavenlies, before the death of Jesus on the cross. Quickened us. Oh, thank you for that verse. Quickened us. Before the death, yeah. we are like, we're just dead, scanty, mm. looking for solution. But at the death of Jesus, there was alteration. Mm, awesome. Something was altered and we were raised up. It quickened we us. We are no longer aliens. We become, ah, see, after members the, of the household of after God. After the Citizens. orders and the ever, after the Godhead, that is the Trinity, the God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We are next. Mm. We, Even be, before, be, before, the angels. Angels. before the angels. Before the death of Christ, we were after the angels. Mm. You know, because they, you know, the God will send there because there was, we were just there. But immediately at the death of Jesus, there was alteration. Awesome. There just have to be because that word, he has put on everything under us has to come to play. Awesome. You know, child of God, I well, like continue to, with this. It's really uh, is deep. It's deeper than what words can and say. And I'm trying to situate it in the context of the issues and the troubles all around us in our country. Child of God, sister, brother, God has put that hatred under your feet. You can live above hate. God has put that wickedness under your feet. You can live above wickedness. You can live with the love of God and begin to show love to your neighbor. Love builds. Love edifies. All things, nothing is exempted. And I'm trusting God that in our country, in our lifetime, we'll begin to experience the love unbounded. We are talking of God's foundation for a family. And we are a family, the human family. Question four. How can you explain the devaluation of mankind by certain human attitudes in our generation? Genesis chapter 4, verse 8. Can you smart you help us read that? Okay. And then Romans chapter 1, 21 to 23, and verse 25. Romans 1, 21 to 23. Yeah. The Bible says, Because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing to be wise, they became foolish and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man and birds and four-footed animals and creeping things. And then Genesis 4, 8. Now I'm Sorry, saying... then verse 25. Okay, sir. Who exchanged the truth of God for the lie and worshipped and served the creature rather than create creator who is blessed forever. Amen. Amen. Now Cain talked with Abel, his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field <coughs> that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and killed him. That's Genesis 4 8. Kanombola, just in few words, how can you explain the devaluation of mankind by certain human attitudes in our generation? Conspiracy theory. If there is anything, well, people have been talking about conspiracy theory for some time now. Mm. But if there is anything like conspiracy theory in the world right now, that is the evaluation of human life. Mm. Some set of people decided to gather and infect the larger society, the global world, with a disease. Just in the name of reducing the population of the world. There is no better devaluation than that. If there is anything conspiracy theory. Yes, sir. Because we've been hearing about it for some time now. That, in fact, it's even the conspiracy theory that gave birth to COVID-19. There's the conspiracy there theory. There will always be conspiracy theories anyway. Because some yeah. set of people decided to come up with something to reduce the population of the world. That is one. Two, racism. Because I'm black, you feel I'm inferior to you because you're white. Because he's red, he's inferior to you because you are white. No, that's the evaluation of human life. Abraham Lincoln says something. He says, no man is greater than the other. Mm. Every man is born equal. 
either with silver spoon or without silver spoon. We came out from one same source. Our humanity makes us. Uh, my color does not change the color of my blood. The color of my skin has nothing to do with my blood. Has nothing to do, to do with my mentality. Has nothing to do with my spirituality. I'm only unfortunate or fortunate to come in black skin. And for the fact that you come in white skin does not make you superior over me and does not make me superior over you for whatever reason. That's another point now. And even we too, as children of God, some Christian brethren are beginning to go awire on pride. They are beginning to see themselves as infallible. No wonder the Bible says, whoever that thinks he stands should be careful. Let's Let's it fall. That, when you see your brother and you feel like your spirituality level is higher than him, who says, who is the judge? Who is judging that? That is devaluation. There's nothing that can be more devaluation than that. Praise awesome. the Lord. God indeed will help us. We are not here, let me just, in terms of, do I use, how do I put it now? To contextualize the issues around conspiracy theories. But we are trusting God that in our time, there will be love amongst us. There won't be need for you to promote agenda that will limit the population of human beings or thereabouts. There, there is no need for that. God has a purpose, a niche he has created for you and for mm. me. And let's pursue God and go for him. Yes. Kind of I, I wanted to add... Just to tie up, as your ad time is because of our time, you also suggest solutions with reference to some of these scriptures. Okay. And I'd like us to read that scripture so that you can take it our time if I spent. All Exodus right. chapter 20, 12 to 17. Okay. Now, th talking about uh, Genesis 4, 8, we devalue human life by killing each other unnecessarily. Yes, sir. That is the kind of the world we live in today. As I was trying, to, I, 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 I tried to look at terrorism index last month and this month mm -hmm. and I discovered that Afghanistan is number one, Iraq number two, Nigeria is number three. Hmm. The most number three, we are number two before. Yes, we are number three. The most terrorized country in the world. And that's because there is killing going on in every part of our nation. That is, that is devaluation of human life. We don't value human life again. Hmm. What's the premium of even, human life? Even the security agencies that we expect that is going to protect lives. As a matter of fact, they are doing nothing. The government have also failed in their responsibility. That's because we don't value human lives. I'm talking about transgender, someone who is a male and has decided to go and change himself to become a female. Is, is a devaluation. Or a female decided to change, to change himself to, to male. It's a devaluation. You are looking down upon the creator. Yes, he has God. created you as a male, mm. and you feel that he didn't not, do well. Yeah. And then you decided to go and change Against yourself. Against God's original That is pattern. devaluation. In fact, you devalue yourself. And in other passages, we've seen how uh, we, women beings don't glorify God again. When you don't glorify God, you devalue yourself. Mm. You I devalue. Know, before, before we suggest solutions, something came to my mind. Something is in vogue now. Cosmetic surgery. Will you not call it devaluation when a lady rise up in the morning and feel like the, the, the bomb bomb he has or she has is not enough, he should go and pump it. Or that the breast she's having is not big enough, he should go and pump it. Or that it will, she will remove her eyebrow completely, shave it off, and now put pencil or color and draw her own the way she wants it. You're looking at the creator in his words. God say, this is how this eyebrow should be. But a lady wakes up and says, no, this is not the way I want it. <laughs> you know, sir. Shaves it off. <laughs> you know, sir, the Bible said, for everything God created, including man, and he looked at them and pronounced them to be good. Yes. You no, know, God created you, and he looks at you and I says, you're good. good. In my own very image. Mm -hmm. Why then go? I'm just, that's what I'm saying. You know, if a woman decided to shave off this, and say, no, I don't want it like this. I mean, shave it off. And decided to draw it like this. That's the evaluation. That's the evaluation. Now, my lip is like this. I say, oh, this lip is not round enough. I'll go and pump in silicone to make it look full and round. I say, oh, my nose is too flat. I'll go and readjust it. <laughs> is that not evaluation? <laughs> it we, is. Can, we, cannot, we cannot finish it, this. Yeah. The issue for me, mm. and I, let me say it strongly, the best you can ever be of another is the photocopy. God made you original. original. Mm -hmm. If you desire anything apart from who God has made you to be, the best you can ever be is the photocopy. Mm. And then the issue of racism, ethnicity, Nigerians are going to their tribal cocoons, is not necessary. 
you know, I we are the my communal go clash as is going on right they, now. They, the tribes they, and tribes go to Benue, go and see these communal clashes. The fault on. lines are being magnified. We don't need it. We are one Necessary. nation under God. Let's build a nation, a one family that God will be proud of. Mm. It's not yet late in the day. Mm. Our leaders can begin to do something. You, as a child of God, can begin to show the love of Christ. Yeah. Conclusion. Now, now, okay, now talking about uh, solutions, solutions mm -hmm. I, I know we are out of time, but talking about solution, there is need for, for, for us to obey the commandment. The commandment is very, very clear about the sanctity of life. And part of the commandment says, thou shalt not kill. Let us obey the commandment. Let us also allow the Holy Spirit to teach us what we need to know. Uh, that is to say, there is need for everyone to be born again. Accept the Lord Jesus into your life. Exactly. If you have done that, and by any means you have fallen, you need to come back to the Lord Jesus. Mm -hmm. And if you have not accepted him, use the opportunity today being a Pentecost Sunday and allow the Holy Spirit to come in. Awesome. Because when the Holy Spirit comes in, he will teach you all that you need to know. And you become it a new man in somewhere. Christ. You have to love your neighbor to add to his point. Loving yeah. your neighbor, that's what Exodus chapter 20 is promoting. When you love your neighbor, you know you don't have to steal his things. You know you don't have to cheat mm. against him. You don't have, have to, to commit adultery. That just had to be there. Awesome. God indeed has helped us. And uh, part of the solution also, I like what the church is doing in our time, is reaching out to some of these folks. Mm. Mission. Going to meet them in their places. Some weeks back, I think in the first week, week of May, our diocese went to missions. That Boko Haram member, that man in Sambisa Forest, that man who is taking up arms to kill his neighbor, perhaps he has done known better. You can reach out and share the love of God with that Christ. And the Holy Spirit, whom we are celebrating today, the Pentecost Sunday, can arrest that man and he will become a new man in Christ. Conclusion. God's foundation principles for mankind are for them to subdue, enjoy and replenish the earth, not for us to be clean ourselves. Mm. <laughs> There is neither mother nor worship of other creatures in his principle of human coexistence. Mm -hmm. There is neither mother nor worship of other creatures in his principle of human coexistence. The more we adhere to these foundation principles, the more peaceful coexistence there will be in the human social world. Food for thought. Every principle of hardship is from mankind. Absolutely. Memory verse, Genesis chapter 1, verse 28. Let's take it together. Genesis 1, 28. And, and God, God blessed them, them and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and, multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over, over the fowl of the air, over and over every living thing that moveth upon, upon the earth. earth. That's God's mandate for you. That's God's mandate for me. And I pray that the Holy Spirit will arrest all of our hearts so that we wake up in a new person in Christ Jesus and begin to exercise this mandate so that together the family of God on this face of the earth will become all that God desires us to be. I want to thank God for today. God has mightily used our fathers in God to bring his word and his mind to us. The question now is, what will be your response to the matters that God has raised? Can I smart, sir? Thank you for coming. Thank you so much for the pleasure. privilege. It's a privilege. You know, at a point, I was like, ah, are we in political, <laughs> Christian in politics? Because of the issues that is happening. And God is using you mightly on that platform. We Thank you so we much. We pray that his grace will continue to lead you. Amen. As you continue to work for him in his via in the name of Jesus. Amen. Canon Doctor. Thank you so much, I bro. could sense the passion. <laughs> we are all God. trusting God for solution. We are all trusting God for God solution. God will heal our land. Definitely is coming to heal us. May the boundary lines continually fall onto you in pleasant places in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Child of God, until I see you on this platform, same time next week, keep on living for Jesus. Do not mind the distractions around. God is real. God bless you.